Hey there folks and welcome to my review. As you can see, this is no impact piece, but it is indeed a lovely blade. Um, for those of you who may or may not know, this is uh, the epitome of a particular uh, style of knife called the Italian stiletto. Now, as you can see here, this is all black all the way around. Uh, you see these lovely brass colored screws and the shiny black firing button. Oh yeah, this is indeed nice. Let's take a look at the action here. Wow, very good kick, very nice action from the, I don't know if you can see the little spring in there. All black blade, nice, uh, you can see the gleam of the edge there. You can see the kind of traditional um, little stud or nub lock there. You've got a swivel on the bolster to unlock it. Kind of put some back pressure there, ease it off. And once you get it there, it's kind of free hanging. So then you close it back in. Very cool. Now this uh, the safety slider, it is very stiff. Now I've had um, I have had a cheap Chinese version of this, and the 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 safety slide went back and forth, no problem. This one, as you can see, it is indeed. Oh, focus. As you can see, Frank B, and then just barely kind of scratched on there, Italy. So this is indeed a Frank Beltrame switchblade in the four inch bayonet tactical style. Now, what makes this tactical, you ask? Well, it's the all black, and um, you won't be able to tell from the video, but these scales are kind of rubberized. I'm not sure exactly what material they are, but they are indeed rubberized, almost kind of a chalky feel to them. Gives you very good positive grip. Um, yeah, very cool. Uh, I won this in a giveaway uh, from Instagram uh, from Lightning OTF Knives. Uh, if you follow them on Instagram, they're they're really cool. They're he's constantly showing off uh, new stuff that they get shipments of, you know, lots of uh, stuff all the way from the higher end all the way to the lower end and everything in between. Um, these Frank Beltrames are really nice. Now, um, again, like I said before, I have owned uh, cheap Chinese switchblades, uh, owned one for a good year or two, and then I, I was a kid, I lost it somewhere, I can't remember what happened to it. Um, but from what I did remember of that, it was kind of a piece of junk, more of a toy than anything. This one, I mean, when we're talking Italian switchblades, uh, most of them are simply that, toys or collectibles. But these Beltrames and some of the Compilons, or AGA Compilon ones, um, they're they're more than just toys. They're, they're very well made, they're almost pieces of art. Now this one, it doesn't have any, you know, super fancy scales and stuff, but I still consider this a collectible and just kind of a nice piece to own. Now, when you look at these and you think about what they are and their legal status currently, there's a few notes on that. First of all, um, yes, unfortunately, these are for the most part still illegal in many parts of the United States and certainly most parts of the world. I don't agree with that, but that's just the way that it is and the way it's been for decades. Now, why is that, you may ask? What, what's the point of that? Well, you have to remember, you know, 50, 60 years ago when these were outlawed and banned, they were the premier and only type of folding knife that could be used, you know, to attack and, you know, murder or intimidate people with, aside from fixed blades. And most people didn't go walking around with fixed blades on them. They had little grandpa, you know, folding knives, slip joints, jack knives. The mobsters, the gangsters, the street toughs, you know, West Side Story, Godfather, all that junk, people carried these, and when they did, it meant they, they were up to no good, and they were out to hurt people or intimidate people. So, are these still viable tools today? Are these still, you know, would it still be wise for a person, you know, who is um, of the self-reliant type to carry something like this on their person for, you know, everyday needs and, you know, possible self-defense needs? Um... My personal opinion on that, and it, guys, it doesn't count for much. I'm just a nobody YouTube guy who likes likes all his toys. Uh, my personal opinion is, yeah, you know, something like this, you know, if you pull something like that on someone and then pull it, you know, in dagger grip, in a ice pit grip like that, or even kind of in a forward thrusting grip, yeah, that's, that's going to hurt. That's going to wound and possibly kill. But again... I'm a knife guy first and foremost, and I have simply dozens and dozens of other types of knives that I would probably rather carry and probably rather use in an emergency type situation. And they're with this um, narrow blade design and kind of the kind of a shallow grind there. And what I mean is is that you don't have very much um, of a 
of an angle going from the thickest part of the blade here at the middle all the way to the edge. So what that translates to is, yeah, it's sharp, but it's not going to shear and slice through things the way, say, you know, a buck knife or even uh, some of the flat ground folders that you see. So what you're basically get, given is a very nice, fun to play with, um, folding, locking shank. <laughs> now you might say, hey, those are really awesome. You know, you're, don't be a jerk. Those, those are really cool. And I say, yeah, they are really cool. They're a lot of fun. I love this thing. I'm never getting rid of it. Um, you know, it's, it's one of my new favorite toys. I mean, come on. That's awesome. It, it deploys with authority and with that small thin blade and the, the powerful spring in there, it, it flies out of there and locks pretty securely into place. Again, it's it's no cold steel triad lock, but it's, it's firm enough for what it is. Now, guys, I wouldn't try and go out and survive with this thing. I mean, if, I, if it was the only thing I had, it's still better than fingernails. I wouldn't try to gut a deer or bone a fish with it, you know, or even, <laughs> even you know, hack off some salami for a treat. No, th this... This is a weapon. This is something meant to scare or or, or stab. I mean, that, that tip is needle-like. It's very thin. I mean, you could double up three layers, five layers of clothing, and it would still just glide right through it. I mean, very nasty tools. And I, I can imagine the, the street guys and the mobsters and whatnot that did use these things, they liked them for a reason because they are intimidating. They are cool. Uh, some of the nicer ones, they have lots of, you know, amazing... Uh, scale materials. You can get stag, you can get mother of pearl and abalone. You can get really cool, you know, exotic and har exotic and rare hardwoods uh, done in there. You can get file work, Damascus blades, um, gold work, you know, just the list is endless. These are really just kind of a way for a lot of Italian craftsmen, especially to show off, you know, how good they are <laughs> at making things. So yeah, they, they are cool. They are highly collectible. Um, they're fun to play with. I mean, and for people that are knife guys or into weaponry, they're just, they're awesome. Even people that aren't knife people or into weaponry, they recognize these and they know what they are. They may not know all the details about them or their history, but they know what they are. And speaking of history, guys, I'm not really versed enough to go into all the detailed history of these things. Um, that being said, for, for a very long time, I would say probably almost if not a hundred around a hundred years these were some of the only um folding type fighting knives of their ilk for a very long time i mean you got the the buck 110 that came out in the mid 60s in the united states and that kind of became the folding uh fighting knife of its day even though it was never sold as such it was always sold as a hunting knife these for the longest time up until you know the 70s and 80s when you had kind of the you know tactical knife being born and then certainly 90s and the in the 2000s you know tac you had tactical knives on in every gun magazine you could find and these were quickly supplanted i mean you don't see any pocket clip there's no easy way to carry this you do have a safety which is rather secure unfortunately i can't demonstrate it it is it is secure i've 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 pushed hard with my thumb and it still didn't deploy. I've squeezed the scales as hard as, hard as I could and it didn't deploy. With my old um, uh, flea market one, squeezing the scales, even with safety on, would deploy the blade. And that was problematic, uh, carrying that thing in a pocket as a, as a teenager. So um, just be aware of that. You can kind of see already where the, where the paint, and it is kind of a paint. It's not a DLC or anything like that. We can see where the paint is kind of slowly wearing off. And it will with time. Um, but yeah, of these kind, you know, you can get some really expensive Italian switchblades on into the hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And they're nice. They're super nice. This one is between uh, $60 and $100, depending on where you look. Uh, Lightning OTF9 sells these, I believe, at around the $60 to $80 mark. Don't hold me to that price. His prices can change, and I am not responsible for that in any way, shape, or form. Um, again, these are lovely knives. I love it. I love them. This one comes in around nine inches overall. So it is a very long knife. Um, I have knives with um, more cutting more cutting length that are shorter and have shorter blades. So if that makes sense, because you have this portion here, which is dull, you have the, the bolster, the handle, and then kind of this uh, integral piece. There we go, it's showing up. You can see the liners and the bolsters um, and the pommel are all um, single pieces of metal. Uh, you can see here it's a swivel bolster, so you do that and it takes the heat off the, the back pin. You just need to get it clear and then it's free floating. So you can close this one-handed pretty easily. That out audible click there, make sure that it clicks home. So yeah, um, you don't see too many reviews of these. This is the Frank Beltrain Tactical 9-inch uh, stiletto and um, 
yeah, I think you guys should definitely check it out if it's the kind of thing you might be interested in. And if you do, I hope you go over to Lightning OTF Knives. Uh, they're excellent, very competitive pi competitive pricing. Uh, he ships stuff immediately. Uh, a lot of fun to watch his Instagram feed. And yeah, I think if you feel like something like this would be you know, a good addition to your daily carry or just Instagram pocket dump pics, you should totally go for it. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review. Take care, and we'll see you soon.